We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? The Facebooking and the tweeting and the Instagramming, all that would not exist without our understanding of science. So it's amazing that you took that as an insult. If you mean true for you is different from true for anybody else. Have yeah, to come to absolutely, you. because I can't think either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. Greetings, citizens of Netlandia. Welcome to O'Reilly Radio. This is show 132 for Friday, November 11th, 2016, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go O'Reilly. I'm your host, Andy Cowan, and I've got some of my usual suspects, but I also have an absolute full house today. I've got David O'Connor. I've got Stephen Griffith. I've got Daniel Atherton. I've got Amber Besecker. And I've got two new, two do count them too. I've got Paul Castaneda and I've got Jason Watson. Welcome everyone to what is going to be a special show. We're going to break down the the promises of our newly elected president, Donald J. Trump. President elect. True. He does have a lawsuit that he has to go through. Before he ever makes it to January, he, he uh, just has the fraud one though. The uh, the child rape case got dropped. Just just mm-hmm. fraud. Just yeah. Well, that. Do you the, ever the, think the you'd hear threats. that? Do you ever hear think you'd say that about a president elect? Never. The child rape case was dropped. No, never, never. Out of fear. Yeah, she was. Uh, she was receiving it. death threats. Weird. Oh, totally weird. Shocking, even. I'm. I'm sure. But. Um, uh, before we get into introductions, I just want to let everyone know that is listening and watching out there. We we are streaming out to Facebook, we are streaming out to Twitch, and of course this is going to be stored uh, in perpetuity on YouTube and also available on our website, oreallyradio.com, for show 132. Uh, if you find that something that we've said is in error, or you just want to laugh and poke at us and, and provide some witty commentary... You can send in an email at O'Reilly Radio Podcast, O R L Y R A D I O P O D C A S T, at gmail.com, or you can phone it in at 470 222 6759. We'll also t- accept text messages there, and uh, we'll read them on the air, and we'll, we will provide feedback. We will. Of course, also, if you are so inclined, directly from our website, you can, like Mama Van in our chat room, you can, uh, you can talk to us directly. And that would that would warm the cockles of our hearts from deep, <laughs> deep down. Um, so, welcome, Mama Van. You are you are among the panel, the biggest panel I think that I've ever run. So this is this is a lot of fun, and we've got people you know coming in from their phones and everything. And speaking of that, we have a field reporter, Stephen Griffith. Please tell us what you what you're seeing out there in the field. <laughs> this is Stephen Griffith reporting in the field for O'Reilly Radio. Uh, Orlando tonight actually had a protest for, over the election of Donald J. Trump and, of course, Mike Pence. It was a wonderful experience, I will say. There was a place here known as Lake Eola. There was a meeting there, and it was over a 1,000 people easy, which for as quickly an uh, organized protest as this was, was actually rather impressive. There may have been more, but... I was all over the place and could only see so much. Mm-hmm. And there was a march from there all the way to City Hall where a number of speakers uh, took the stage, including uh, representatives from the veterans community, the Latino community, uh, the transgender community, and even Planned Parenthood themselves showed up and was able to deliver a uh, rousing speech about basically, you know, as the, as the phrases went, you know, love Trump's hate, uh, we reject the president-elect, which I like that one. That was actually rather clever. Uh, several other things, you know, my body, my choice, mm-hmm. all good standard protest chants that were going on that carried through the streets and bounced off the buildings in Orlando downtown. Uh, there was surprisingly very little and none that I actually saw counter protesting. There were a few people on the sidelines who would occasionally have a word or two to say, but no actual organized, like, we didn't see like Westboro st- style people, you know, holding signs, you know, screaming positive Trump and hmm. trying to bring up, bring the community down. Um, it was also incredibly peaceful. I was also surprised. We w- literally took to the streets and the Orlando police department was incredibly helpful in the fact of running in front of us and blocking streets off and cross streets to allow this rather large organization 
to go pass through all the way to City Hall and all the way back. Um, there was a lot of love. There was a lot of community there. Uh, it definitely shows that as much as some people or some groups, or as I like to say, the fanboys especially of our president-elect, want to try to break us down and show how much differences there is and, you know, all these, you know, the Muslims are coming after us and black people are thugs and all that kind of stuff. There was a entire mix of people there that were united entirely in love, and that was the theme of the night. And I will say, by God, I was proud to be a part of it, and it was an amazing protest. That's fantastic. That's wonderful. I do have video that I will be linking on my YouTube channel, which I will also be sending to you, Andy, so we can link it in the show later on so that okay. everybody out there can see what I saw. Excellent. I'll definitely add that, and uh, you'll be able to see that uh, at, at the very least. It'll be in our Patreon stream. Of course, hey, we might as well tell you right now, if you like what you see, and even if you don't, if you happen to think that what we're doing is worth it, you can donate to us on an ongoing basis at patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash O'Reilly Radio, or you can uh, give a, uh, hit the donate button on the webpage, and that'll, uh, you know, We'd really like that. But really, we'd like more for you to share the show and get the information out to other people. Grow the audience and let the information flow. That'd be much better. Now, um, Stephen, if you got if you have to drop, because I know you're mobile, more power to you. Yep. And thank you very much for the for the report from the field and being out there. I'm, I'm really pleased that Orlando is being... Um, well, it's being Orlando, which is good. It's yeah. being not Portland right now. Well, it, it <laughs> makes sense to me, at, at the very least, if you look at how florida voted every place that had a major university was that's, blue that's true that's that true. A major university or major latino population typically went blue but yeah. if, on that note let me go ahead and say it was wonderful being out here i hope to have more field reports for later on this is stephen griffith a really radio field reporter signing off <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you Stephen. awesome Okay, now we can get into uh, into the introductions for the new blood. Uh, Paul Castaneda is a longtime friend of mine. He is a, a an actor, a director, a a sales guru, and an overall rabble rouser, and and just a, a, a very pleasant chap to to talk to. Uh, rabble so, rabble. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. <laughs> Just a bit, um, so I'm I'm really happy to have him here. He uh, he offers a unique perspective as a uh, let's see. You you originally were born and and raised in New York, so you've got that New Yorker yes. attitude, and uh, <laughs> and you've been down here in Florida. Just uh, just really, uh, man, you, you you've just been cutting it up. You got so many friends, so so many acquaintances uh, throughout the city and and the area, and you you've made so many connections. Uh, uh, your input is very valuable. Thank you. So I'm, I'm glad to be here. Glad to have you here. And then we've got Jason Watson. Jason, I, I've known you forever, too. Um, right now, you're a... I don't know what you do, but you work <laughs> at SpaceX, and that's all I need to know. <laughs> um, uh, we call it the factory. Oh. We call it the factory. We don't, uh, we, we don't discuss the factory. Well, there you go. Like I said, <laughs> it's all we need to know. He works for SpaceX. There we go. Okay. We won't ask you too much other than maybe to confirm or deny <laughs> some rampant rumor, and, and that would be it. But not on this show. This show is all about politics, politics, politics. And yeah. um, let's see here. In my first notes, I have F, and then the next line is U, and then the <laughs> C and K. Uh, and then Donald Trump won. Discuss. So <laughs> that's those are the show notes. Um Earlier on uh, this week, obviously, Donald Trump uh, had a an amazing victory. Historic. Quite. No matter what you say about it, it was historic. It uh, is historic. That will definitely apply uh, for the history books. Uh, he he walked away with it. He absolutely walked away with it. He um, ran away with it. Yeah. No, not not, he, not all way. It it, it it was the fifth time. That a, a, a president elect has not received the majority of the popular vote. That is true. That is true. So he more but or less the, sauntered the good, away. The good but as news far is as the that, electoral vote. Yeah, the, the, good news, the good news is if it goes as well as the last time this happened, then, oh, wait. Yeah, never mind. 
Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see you in the Middle East. Absolutely, we'll we'll <laughs> just go to cut to the chase there. Um, of course, um, the popular vote did go to Hillary, and a lot of people didn't bother to show up. Um, it was a much lower voter turnout than either of uh, of Obama's turns. Uh, By the last last voter turnout for a a Democratic presidential candidate. Six million less votes. That's really awful. And with there, there was voter suppression. Uh, yes. Ohio had a a phenomenal number of people removed from the voter rolls, with very little time to do any uh, any rectifying of that situation. Uh, we still have rampant gerrymandering that seems mm-hmm. to be somehow completely legal in many states all all across the country. Um, at least here in Florida, they've kind of cleaned that up a little bit. But Florida, as the I've Florida seen, DN- as Florida I've seen, cleaned it up, but the Florida DNC really didn't capitalize on it. Yeah, um, ah. I think really at fault here is the ground game. <clears throat> um, the Republicans have been exceptionally good at running the ground game, getting the local elections, and having people run those campaigns. They've been exceptionally good at that. The Democratic National Committee, on the other hand, um, I think Epic that they... failure. It, yeah, I'm, it's really difficult to come up with words that are appropriate. I believe Dan has something to say. Oh! <laughs> um, Go for it. Dan. Okay. Well, if we want to talk about catastrophic failure, let's look at the DNC. Um... <laughs> Are we going to just have have DNC and and the and the donkey next to it in in the dictionary now? We're just going to look it up and it'll have DNC twenty sixteen. Yeah, the <laughs> catastrophic failure. It, it, look up catastrophic failure on Urban Dictionary. It's going to have a picture of the DNC right <laughs> next to it. Um, no, we we had already from before the outset. Uh, we thanks to WikiLeaks, a degree of collusion between the heads of the DNC. And the Clinton camp. Um, when you are sending the DNC an email that says, please make sure that you interview all the candidates. That's that at least hints at some collusion. Mm. Um, and then, OK, you have this groundswell from Bernie, which came. Let, let, let's say it came out of nowhere. And then you you bury the media coverage of Bernie. Bury it. We have yeah. a Podesta email that comes out that goes, hey, guys, all have lunch with all your media s- surrogates and tell them, hey, all those fringe guys in the Republican Party, legitimately interview them and say that this is what the Republican Party represents. That includes Dr. Sleepy. Ben Carson. And and Trump. Um, interview them as often as you can so that they will pull whoever gets out of that melange as far to the right as possible so Hillary could win. That worked out well. Uh, that, to was quote Paul actu- Castaneda. <laughs> that was an actual email, a memo from Podesta. You, you can look on WikiLeaks and it's there clear as day. Let's uh, let's give them w- billions of dollars in free advertising and name recognition. But but I have to I have to point something out that you know only uh, I've only seen a few people talk about this and it hasn't gotten much play. Yeah, there's there's nothing in WikiLeaks that if we leaked campaign emails from any lifelong politician or lifelong national committee we wouldn't find very similar things it's just that hers got out okay Mm -hmm. um one could argue that what they did is bare knuckle politics that happens all the time it's just we saw it in black and white so it's appalling because that stuff is usually hidden but to think it doesn't happen in every election cycle is just to be naive that's true i mean that's true we got to get we got to give it that yeah, there's also there are degrees. There are degrees. And this yeah. this 
this felt so premeditated as to be appalling. Well, I, I guess the, the difference is that we, we suspect the conspiracy. This time, we had it confirmed. Mm-hmm. Well, there were a number of factors at play. You brought it up in the pre-show about how the young people asked who Hillary Rodham Clinton was. And it was a disaster of an answer because she had two personas. And then because there were two personas and then this came out, it's like, yeah, I don't really think I like the other persona that happens behind the camera. So it's like, I'm not liking either persona. If if you're going to lead with something, you better, (laughs) it better be good. And then we had a series of failures post post Bernie gate as a, we will refer to it. Um, wait, wait, at which, at which point are you referring to it as Bernie gate? Cause there were so many little things that happened along the way. The, the whole thing up to the from, end from, from the first debate uh, to the convention. That was weird. That, that, that encompasses Bernie gate because after the convention, he was, he was, I wouldn't say firmly campaigning, but definitely campaigning for Hillary. And, right, but yeah, for, because he because he got behind the the party and because he but wanted the media to blackout on Bernie didn't end. That's so, that's true. Yeah, that that is very accurate. You you well, never I, I, saw him from the beginning of his campaign cycle on mainstream news outlets. All the way to the end of Hillary Clinton losing the election, he was basically a non-entity as far as the new, the regular news media was concerned. But the funny thing is, he's now getting coverage. Now he's getting it now. Yeah, After because <laughs> because they are are literally pooping in their pants yeah. at the prospect of what Trump might do to them within the next four to eight years. Oh yeah, Hollywood's terrified, but that's not Hollywood here. and and you know the MSNBCs and CNBCs and CNNs of the world. Well, yeah, are no, terrified already, as well. He already denied the, the the access to journalists to travel with him to the White House for his first meeting. Um, mm-hmm. Again, we we already know journalistically he is going to shut the door. Uh, we're going to have now, probably now just hang on. <clears throat> you transition from talking about Bernie to talking about Trump. So when you when you do that, make sure because the audience okay. at home yeah, may right. get confused. We, so make we, sure we, that we you have shifted to Trump. I will shift, shift, shift back to Bernie. No. Yeah, and continue with the DNC postmortem. Yeah. Um. So after Bernie Gate, um, we had a ground game by the DNC by the Clinton camp that was let's just focus on the big cities. Mm-hmm. There's a problem with that. Yeah, as we can see, <laughs> rural America said, uh-uh. Yeah. Big well, cities w- typically vote liberal. You already Why got them. You, you already got them. Yeah. Where you need a ground game is in rural America. Yeah, the Midwest. Black, white, Latino, whatever, rural America voted against Hillary. Yeah. Across the board. Paul's got yeah. something. It, it, Let's... I was just going to say that to me and the the biggest – failure and i was uh you know politically i was a bernie guy who wound up supporting hillary because i mean god help i think us. that's almost all of us here yeah um yeah but the biggest failure to me was at what point whether it's true or not it almost doesn't matter at what point what level of scandal needs to happen before the DNC or the candidate says, you know, for the good of all of us, I'm going to I'm going to step aside and let there be another candidate, because there's a good possibility that these guys are skewering this to the point where there's going to be an October or November surprise that we can't control. And and then we have we'll the FBI. Never Right, and we'll never know the impact of that. I mean, the, the, there's going to be no way to quantify it. What that you know week to, to eight or nine days did to the minds of whatever people were kind of on the fringe as to whether they were going to get their butts out and vote for her or not. 
And but, I, I think oh, – go ahead, Paul. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I was just going to say, but why she was still from scandal to scandal moving forward. I mean, we talk about for the first time ever having a president-elect who we say um, – the child rape case was dismissed. And when's the last time you heard that? Right. But yeah. had she won, had she won, what would we be talking about today? Cause you know, they would have come up with something her, to hit her, her with entire on history, day one. Her entire history I, has been smear after smear after smear. I think she yeah. probably just had the hubris that she could weather it. Well, I also think maybe she wrongly assumed that Americans would know the difference between real scandals and bull crap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think I think we kind of learned that that's not the case. The well, the problem with Hillary as a candidate is the there there has been enough smear for a long enough period of time that there's an entire generation of liberals who literally think that she's the, she is this terrible, awful, corrupt, war criminal person because it's effective. Yeah. It's Amber, literally the entirety of their lives. They have have watched report after report emerge of Hillary did this, Clintons did that, et cetera, et cetera. And it takes so much more effort to debunk the BS than it does to propagate it. That here yeah. we are. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, and Mama Van in the chat room says we would still be talking about Benghazi. And of course, uh, Mama Van, you're also you're you said you're in Northeast Georgia and it's pure red. Absolutely, because they the Republicans went completely with their typical Southern strategy. They had it locked down. However, there was one glimmer of hope from Georgia. They elected their first openly gay House representative. Mm-hmm. So, well, that's the good. glimmer of yeah, hope, I didn't hope is that. from one county. In the entire state. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's historic. That's that's true. True. I I'll take it. Got to gotta take it <laughs> well, where we can get it. Yeah. One of the things that I was going to mention was um, I think another death knell of the DNC this year was the fact that uh, a lot of the um, very staunch Hillary voters back when Bernie still might have had a chance uh, during the primaries, one of their arguments against Bernie was, well, you're reaching too high. Yeah, all that stuff is great. But uh, we need to go for something more realistic. We need to settle. And that completely diminished the passion of so much of the young voters that when and and I'll lump myself in there, too. I did end up voting for Hillary because I understood what was at stake. Mm -hmm. But when we looked at, you know, what happened there, when we were told to just shut up and settle for what we not what we should get, but. You what know we what, what, get. what we can get. Yeah. I think that that caused the disillusionment of so many Democratic voters that I mean, either they didn't show up or they went with third party candidates or some of them turned completely spiteful and went with Trump. And I think that's going to be another death knell is, you know, liberals looking at the Democratic Party going, they do not represent our interests. Oh, have yeah. You guys, have you guys well, looked just, at the. Uh, the third party numbers from the from the swing states at all? Yeah, I fucking yeah. have, it's, and it made me so fucking angry. In Florida, <laughs> we went. In Florida, we went from fifty three thousand third party votes to two hundred and seventy thousand. In in a state like Wisconsin, we went from ten thousand seven hundred to hundred and thirty seven thousand. Wow. And those those votes made the difference. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's crazy if you look. Well, they they made a we, difference, but I don't think that they made we, the difference. We, the yeah, difference we, was we had forty nine percent of of those that could vote didn't vote. Yeah, yeah, we can't predict. We can't predict where those votes would have broken uh, on those third parties. There were so the Gary pe- Johnson votes. There were so many uh, people that hated both of them that it yeah. could have yeah. it could have gone either way. I mean, it well, could, so, mm-hmm. but, could just be so, people but, that weren't going to vote. Well, oh, in what? Florida, for for Florida, for example, there was two hundred and. 20 some odd thousand more votes for third parties. Mm-hmm. He, oh, he won by up. he won by 100,000. Yeah. But the big the big what if about yeah. the statement that that Amber just made is you juxtapose what the DNC uh, did uh, and what the Republicans did, uh, their voters did. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we were told on the Democratic side as she mentioned he's reaching too far. 
we can't do this. We have to go for something more realistic. And the voters and the party on the Republican side, after a certain point, went with a guy that was grabbing said, pussy. Said, "Listen, this guy's getting people to the freaking voting mm-hmm. box. Yeah. So we're gonna get the hell out of the way. No, uh, I, 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 to to go from from stuff that we we've heard on the Republican side to just give us a contrast is they went whole hog." In, in using the, the, the old school Southern strategy, but on a national level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, we, the, the dog whistle wasn't a whistle. It was an air horn. <laughs> it was an air raid. Uh, yeah. And this was I the mean, blitz. We're having the KKK is having a victory parade in North Carolina in President elect Trump's honor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Again, that things tell I, you something. Things we shouldn't be ever having yeah. to say again. Ever. <laughs> the, 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 the disillusioned white supremacists, the disillusioned militiamen out there were, were brought back into the Republican fold, and they went to the polls. It mm-hmm. wasn't the, well, my vote ain't going to matter. No, their vote mattered, yeah. and it turned the damn tide. They were it's passion. Fervent, yep. absolute fervent supporters. He, he inspired his people as a candidate, and that was something that was wholly and completely lacking from the Hillary Clinton camp. She mm-hmm. got the standard base, going to vote for blue regardless, and she got the people who were like, I'm going to throw up in my mouth a little bit, but I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's, here's where, here's and, it, where and I, that's not enough to win an election. No, yeah. no. Here's where you could, here's where you could see it almost in a microcosm. The night before the election, they have the the huge event um, in, uh, I believe it was Philadelphia, with ten thousand people that showed up. Right. Yeah. The last, the last stand, and they had a procession of speakers who I I watched. It started with Chelsea. Um, then it was, I believe, Bill, then it was, uh, uh, the first lady, then it was the president and it ended with Hillary. Okay. And out of all the people that I mentioned, the one that was least inspiring (laughs) was the candidate. (laughs) Yeah. No. Well, it's another Dukakis moment. Yeah, you can't win that way. You just, when you're the least inspiring person on the stage, you're the one running. I'm not saying she's not qualified. I'm not saying I don't wish she would have won. I'm just saying from from analyzing it, there was no passion to be had. Well, why, you know, correct. Why, why, why did Obama beat her twice? Well, something, something that I want to bring up um, – just to note that I do empathize with Hillary Clinton's situation because no matter what she did, she was going to be wrong. And if she did express any kind of excitability or passion, she would have been called uppity. She would have been called hysterical. She would have been called emotional. She does not have the temperament of a president of the United States. And uh, again, Samantha B, because I watch her fairly religiously, did a really (laughs) great segment on, um, who Hillary used to be back in like the late sixties and seventies and how marrying Bill Clinton and being, um, I guess the first lady of Arkansas or whatever, Mm -hmm. um, changed her because every time she expressed a even mildly radical opinion, she was skewered. Like, well, let's go to when she was the actual first lady. She tried to do a Medicare for all thing Mm -hmm. and was, was, Pretty much compared to the devil itself by the Republicans. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and during I mean, that time. Yeah. As a result, she she developed that. I mean, like Samantha B even like showed the videos of like her changing her hair, bleaching it so it was blonde. You know, becoming interested in you know decorating and all the things that were expected of her. And it's taken her some time to reclaim her identity, I think, uh, of who she truly is. And and I don't even think she's achieved that yet. I think she's still working this on... not even her final form. But... Yeah, <laughs> you know. I, I, I under, there's a lot of validity in what you're saying, and I know that it's a different time. But I have a hard time giving her a pass on that in 2016 
when the single best speech of the entire election cycle was delivered by Michelle Obama because she's a woman, she's black, and she has a lot of haters. And she gave well, the single most inspiring speech that I heard the entire election cycle. Michelle's and also she of a, a different generation, though. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's something also, else I was going to bring up. And, she yeah. doesn't, if, and she's black. If I may. Well, there is a, there is a different mindset there between yeah. the uppity white woman and the sassy black lady. But one one is just generally more appealing in a way. Or acceptable. Yeah. 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 Dan's going and I, I want in on this too. Okay, okay, but okay. Let's <laughs> let's let you, you brought Amber, you brought up Hillary's history. Mm-hmm. Let's go to that. Hillary was a Goldwater Republican. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. She was a Goldwater Republican. Now, for those in the audience who may not know their history, um, Barry Goldwater was a... Back in time. Yeah. <laughs> Barry Goldwater was a, 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 a fairly conservative Republican based on economic and foreign policy. However, uh, even after his defeat for his presidential run, before and afterward was liberal on domestic policy. He, he thought that, like many Republicans back in the day, the government had no place in the bedroom. Let people be people. Yeah. Mm. Um, and she was supportive of that kind of candidate. And that's where a lot of the neoliberalism that we have in the Democratic Party comes from today. Yeah, just to take you back, it's Barry Morris Goldwater, American politician and businessman who was a five-term U.S. uh, senator from Arizona and the Republican Party's nominee for president of the United States in the 1964 election. So I was back, 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 back. Yeah, but she was a Goldwater Republican. And to, let's be fair, she's still a Goldwater Republican. It's just if you yeah. support things like the government not being in your bedroom and not caring about whether or not you're going to have a child or whether or not you're going to marry someone of the same gender, uh, you have to be Democrat. The, one of the, a nice quote from him is, uh, you don't need to be straight to fight and die for your country. You just need to shoot straight. Hmm. Yes. That's great. So that's that's a Goldwater Republican. And, that, that's, and that's also uh, it's also Veterans Day. So thank you very much for your service to the country. We definitely thank you, because without you and your service to the country living, dying and fighting for us, uh, we wouldn't be able to speak our minds like we are right now. So thank you very much. All of the veterans that are listening to the you're show. Here. You're here. <clears throat> and I, I also must agree with Mr. Goldwater, <laughs> with the representative <laughs> from Arizona. I do. Re- I do declare that he is correct. You do not need to be straight to fight and die for our country. You just need to shoot straight. So thank you. Okay. So um, I don't think that Hillary is going to run again. I think she, because no. at the end, you know, just to, to kind of let's wrap up the, um, the postmortem of the DNC, which very well may be its, its true end. We may see something completely new in a couple of years. I, uh, I think the DNC uh, is essentially on fire. <laughs> At this point, it is yeah. Like the the, there is a literal smoldering radioactive chasm between the old guard and the up and coming voters who are very upset that Hillary Clinton was shoved down their throats when there was a very real chance that Bernie could have taken it. It's a dumpster fire in the shape of a political party, is what it is. Nice. And nice. right now, for the leadership of, of the DNC, we have two candidates who have stepped forward. One, we have Howard, one has been proposed by Bernie Sanders. And Elizabeth Warren. And mm-hmm. that's uh, Ellison. Yes. I believe uh, Keith Ellison. Yep. I, yeah. That's um, right. And then the other who has thrown his hat into the ring is Howard Dean. Nope. That's so bad, we have bad move, bad move. So we have old establishment mm-hmm. and one of the most progressive voices in the room. Let's see who wins. Old and busted, new hotness. 
Yes. I do want to I do want to say before we close the, the door on the DNC because I <laughs> I posted this I posted this on Facebook and got into several thread battles over this and it may, it may happen here I don't know. Your wall is great for thread battles. It really is. It, it really is. That's it's, <laughs> it's insane. But um, I posted and I firmly believe this that we are fooling ourselves when we look at what happened if we think that. What the with what the voters showed us the complete uh, analysis of who came out and why they voted. If anyone thinks that Bernie would have beaten Trump, I, I I'm sorry, I just don't see it. Because and it's not Bernie's fault. I think he would have gotten a ton of support from from the wing of the party that was just mentioned. It's the new guard. It's impossible to tell now because again, that it's, that's, it is. Well, but he might have gotten that six million people up and out out to the polls, right? The, the, and the those people that were Obama primarily wanted. the young people who voted for Obama twice, and those um, who didn't. Those are the people who didn't show up. The the other thing the is in, in 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 swing states, especially. Well, let's just take it from from my neck of the woods here in Florida. Um. With Bernie, I think a number of the rural counties would have swung because he was an anti-establishment candidate. Mm-hmm. And he was yeah. talking about things that rural voter, voters care about, like raising the minimum wage to 15, not that 1250 she was proposing. Yeah, fuck that. 15. And, hey, your kids, yeah. our future, they should go to college for free. Mm-hmm. That would have you played should. really. That would have played really well right up until Trump labeled him a communist and reminded people that he was Jewish. Nobody cares about communism, and very yeah. few people care about the Jewish thing anymore. Uh, okay. okay, that would have that well, would have maintained the the whole. They had already uh, done that, though. That's the thing. They had already I, done it, and it did not affect quick, it. Go ahead. Can Amber? I tell a quick anecdote? Oh yeah, go for it. All right, so I understand that the plural of anecdote is not data. I get it. Very good. But I just I just do want to touch on what Paul said about um, – and, and the debate we're currently having about whether or not communism as a label matters. Um, and I got to go with Daniel on this that I don't, I don't think anyone cares. The reason why is because um, my father, for instance, is an extremely diehard conservative, watches nothing but Fox News, grew up in the era of you know the, the Cold War. Uh, he was born in 47. Mm-hmm. You know, he, um, my, my grandfather's a World War II veteran. Uh, he's part of the Air Corps, all that jazz. Um, back before the primaries, um, I made him sit down and watch uh, Bernie speak. And he was completely convinced that he wasn't going to like him. Ah, oh, he's a socialist, all this other bullshit. He watches it and he looks at me halfway through and goes, I would vote for him today if I could. And I, he goes, I hope he gets the support. I'm going to tell all of my friends who are all, you know, like-minded individuals, you know, to my dad. I'm going to tell them all to sit down and listen because I don't think they've ever had the chance to listen to what he actually says. And he's like, now that I've heard it, he thanked me. And I mean, this isn't something that my dad does very often. He's like, I, I actually wanted to thank you for making me listen to him because all I was doing was allowing what other people had said to color my judgment of him. And, and there had gotten the yeah. airtime in the debates. Exactly. But let me, but let me say this, too, because we talked about earlier that he didn't get any coverage. He didn't get on the news. He didn't get any airtime. Yeah. He also didn't get the airtime on Fox. So your dad probably listened to him and thought he's a great man. And then t- if he turned around and went back to Fox and he'd been the candidate, that would have completely changed. The, the yeah, facts, I, I don't think so. I don't either. think so either. He did, because he, he would have still had he well, did. he would Once, have still had three debates versus Trump, where yeah, the exactly. people would have heard him speak. See, once exactly. once he would be, would have been named the candidate, once he was the opposition, the gloves are off, and they have to show him. Well, but and how, to bookend well, that, my dad didn't vote for Trump. He didn't vote. He wouldn't well, vote for him. Well, so but my my thing is is mm-hmm. what did they do with Obama? We all think he's a rational man. What did they do to him? Uh, most of he still won. He he benefited. Exactly. Bernie he Bernie benef- 
Bernie benefited from not having airtime. His his legacy is still intact. I don't agree. Hey, hey, not hey, in the I, DNC, but as, as far as his numbers go, if he had had airtime. I'll put my gloves on and fight this one. Yeah. Oh, right. hold, hold on, hold on. Absolutely. I, 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 want to, I want to pile on one more anecdote. Um, um, my... <laughs> My my mother, also born uh, in 1954, mm. also a staunch conservative, uh, she was going to vote for Bernie. Mm-hmm. But of course, as soon as it went to Hillary, she voted for uh, voted for Trump. Exactly. And I think after again talking through the issues properly, I even managed to convince my father, again born in 1952, that universal health care was actually a good thing. But as the only, I, I think, <laughs> as the only, as the only, I think, Latino uh, on the podcast today. Yes, sir. Yeah. I would tell you that if Bernie would have been the candidate, the Latino vote would have been even more split than it was. Um, there is a heavy, heavy, and I say this as a son of Cubans who migrated here. But I see it even in my Latin American friends, et cetera. There's a heavy, heavy, heavy fear of socialism slash communism that whenever you hear those code words to a certain segment of that Latino population, you're done. Hmm. You're, that there's no way I, I, I will vote for anyone before I vote for you. And, oh. and that is a base that the Democratic Party needs needed and needs going forward. And one of the reasons she lost is that she did get them at the break levels that she needed to get them to win this election. She was wholly uninspiring. And based on that information is where I come in and throw a couple of punches. All right. All right. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> okay. I got your gloves. I'm ready. <laughs> Thanks. That's all bad. <laughs> No, I didn't know we were okay. allowed to bring props. Nobody told me. Well, you don't have a webcam okay. on, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Bernie gets the nomination. All right. Here we go. So media has to start covering him. Now, yeah. one of the things that's great in this day and age of media is we have everything on tape. And what did we hear from the Republican side back during the primaries? I'm like Bernie. I like Bernie. I like Bernie's ideas. Those ads could have been put out left, right, yeah. and center. Anything when it comes to communism and whatnot, that could easily have been shot down just by throwing up, hey, this guy likes this idea. Hey, this guy likes me. Hey, no, you can punch above your weight with, with the media we have today if you use it properly. And when it comes to having the anti-establishment candidate against the screaming yes. Cheeto, um, we, you could easily have so, saw the swing in those same voters that carried Obama to his second term. Now, here's where I'll start throwing numbers. All right. Let's see these things dates. <laughs> All right. Now, in your Latino vote. We saw Hillary Clinton lose 7% of what carried Obama last time. I'm fairly certain, given the numbers that we see in contrast. I'm, I'm going I'm I'm to call you on this. Okay. We can't trust the numbers because there were so few right. people that showed up. And there were so with the with the way that the demographics were split out, if we start saying that the third party votes. If if it wasn't for Gary Johnson, so and so would have no, no. won. Or, I, I'm no, not, no, no, I'm not done. If we start doing that, all we do is just shout at each other because it doesn't get anywhere because it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, she lost. She lost big. This is yeah. a post mortem. We're figuring out why, not how, not, at not the, exactly at how. At the end of the day, you know, 10%, lost. 10% of the voters who came out in exit polls said the reason they voted Trump was because Hillary was the other candidate. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine a 10% swing to a different candidate? She, she mm-hmm. lost because she was Hillary Clinton. Yes. So we're, yeah. still, so we're still trusting. I, I, I agree with Andy to the extent that 
we're doing a postmortem and talking about numbers that we can't trust. No, because now trust, it's not that we, we trust can't trust them. certain numbers. It's that we can't no, assign you, them. No, no, you, can't, numbers I'm you, can't, you can't even say exit surveys say every survey, every pollster, every everybody, the whole thing has now come into question. OK, like, like you, never before, like never get my before. numbers in. My numbers are not from 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 the pollsters. That's not what I'm using, man. Okay, Dan, what? go ahead. What are your numbers? You've get, you you talked it through. Go ahead. Let's yeah, go. let's okay. just do the for the sake of argument. Okay, for okay. the sake of argument, what are your numbers? My numbers are 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 less from from just one exit poll. This is an aggregate, okay. and going from aggregate numbers, which again we can actually go and swing the numbers by the 5% error margin that you should. Yay, statisticians. Error margins, yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Going from what carried Obama into his re-election, I'm not even going to compare the, 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 his, his original victory because those numbers are crazy. But no, his re-election numbers, we already see between him and Clinton, Obama's and Clinton, a six million voter drop off. Right. Six mil. Of that six mil, he had of that, that six million, there was eighteen percent Latino. Part of that drop off was seven percent Latino. Okay. So she lost seven percent of Latino vote, which I think Bernie would have been able to carry. And let's say you're right. Let's say you're right. How much less of the black vote? Forget Latinos for a second. How much less of the black vote is Bernie getting? Because one of the biggest problems he had, other than media coverage during the primaries, is he couldn't get black people to vote for him no matter what he promised. Okay? Yeah, depending, they went depending on whole, the region. Yeah. They, they went wholeheartedly for Hillary. Who, when who you have a comparison it. between Trump, which is what do you got to lose is my best argument versus Bernie, <laughs> who's going, I can put your kids in college. I think right, he would have gotten could, the black vote. You're, he would have gotten it, but not to the levels, man. You're talking about levels. Right. But we're also she talking already, about an extreme like the black votes an even larger min, or smaller minority than the Hispanic vote. That's true. And and to to Daniel's point about socialism. What was Obama labeled all the way back in 2008? Mm-hmm. He, he was labeled Congress. socialist from the moment he appeared on the scene. Like, uh, I, I don't I buy think, that I that was going to be the, the nail in his coffin. <laughs> yeah, Muslim was down. in there, too. Mu- socialist, Muslim, a- a- insert all the other. Kenyan, yeah. Yeah. non-American, yeah. look at his name. Everything was stacked against that guy. They threw literally everything at him possible. But he was inspiring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but look who they ran against him twice. Mitt Romney, yeah. who's who's uninspiring, and McCain, who's uninspiring, with Sarah Although, Palin. That's very McCain, true. McCain, McCain had the yoke of Sarah Palin. Um, yeah, it but on a purpose. Lot closer. My God, why? Why did you do that to yourself on purpose? Well, that, that, that right. was his campaign manager that pulled that one. Yeah. Um, no, it, it, in my, my, my argument for Bernie and, my, my, and the last combination blow I'm going to throw up here. Okay. Um, it is this. No. I think that 6 million would have gotten to the polls. Yeah. And if the 6 million had gotten to the polls, those swing states would have swung blue. And we would have a different conversation right now. There are and I don't, yeah. I don't care about the, the, the fear from a, a lot of the opposite sides because when we're seeing just an anti-establishment vote. That's 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 what this entire thing is. An anti-establishment vote is what brought Trump into office. I Bernie think- was more anti-establishment and had the other thing that people wanted. Experience. Which was experience. Sanity. They wanted experience. <laughs> they wanted experience and being an outsider. They wanted both. I agree. They could only get one in this election yeah. and they went with the one. Yeah. I think I think you're undervaluing the fact that this was yes anti-establishment but this was um 
and I, I think it was Van Jones. Van Jones uh, mm-hmm. that was a commentator. The white thing. Yeah, th- this was this is lash, also yeah. and was a white lash. This is a group of people who have run this country since its inception, looking around and going, "Holy crap!" In about twenty years, we're not going to be the majority anymore. We got to get a handle on this. This guy says he's going to roll it all back to the 1950s. Let's go. Okay, okay. But now you've got that. And then you put that against a woman that they also right. think that should be in the kitchen. You know, making, in the them, making them sandwiches in the 1920s and 50s. Well, now, I do want to say that I agree with I agree with Paul there. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was a lot of that. But if you put, if you leveled the playing field by putting an old, ma- old, white w- an old white male versus <laughs> another old white male, then that I don't know. It goes away. The well, no, what well, I was it's, say, it's skewed. It mitigates it because what he, it doesn't go away because what Bernie was proposing and what he stands for is not what they wanted. No, I'm sorry. He's, I think he's, 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 he's well, proposing here, stuff go. that actually appeals, and this is the big the the number one sin of the DNC. Bernie was actually talking about stuff that appealed to rural white voters. They yeah. want Medicare. They want their kids to go to college want without to having to pay through the nose. They want a raise. And this was stuff Bernie was talking about, not incrementally, but revolutionary. Yeah. And I it, can tell you that let, – let, 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 let's, 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 you let's can talk tell. about it. You as would you have – hang, hang on. As you can tell, Daniel is very fired up about this. There is a tone <laughs> in his voice that has not been here for weeks. Of course, he also hasn't been here for weeks because he's been sick. Well, but this is this is a level of attitude that he has not shown in a very long time. I, he's very fired I tend, up. I, that's, that's my fault. I tend to do that to people. You do. Well, that's uh, true, and that's why I like having you here. But um, there, There is a surrogate yeah. that you could be, be found with the rural white voter – with Bernie that you did not have for all of Clinton's run from inception to end. She did not speak to the rural white voter. Okay. I think both of you are right. And, and coming off of what Paul said and what you just said, Daniel. um, Yeah, there absolutely was a, a white lash for all the racist reasons that we could possibly talk about. However, there are the people and I give these people no fucking credit because if you've watched my Facebook says at all, These motherfuckers infuriate me. But there are the Trump voters who say, well, I didn't vote for his bigotry. And I think those voters, they might have swung toward Bernie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to agree with Amber here. And I'm going to say, you know, we're going to postmortem this forever. But um, there's no magic bullet. No. Okay. Right. I'll, there's I'll there's not one singular thing that we can hang our hat on here. We're all yeah. right in specific little ways. There but were I think several the, shooters the biggest, on this grassy knoll. The, the biggest thing, and this is something that we've talked about a lot, is, and I brought it up a little bit, is, you know, there's been so much bad said about Hillary Clinton that the right wing voter is literally Pavlovian conditioned to start drooling when they hear the name Clinton. That's true. And not drooling, but like frothing at the mouth. Rabbit, yeah, I rabbit hate this woman. Yeah, and well, to have in her as the opposition to the anti-establishment candidate literally unified the party. And it when she became the candidate, all of the never Trump evaporated. It yeah. disappeared into thin air. And they said, I, "You know, I know, I said never Trump, but." Uh, Hold the nose I, and I, take the mess. I cannot. I cannot here's, take Hillary. Well, so I understand. Here's, here's, understand. here's one. Here's one lesson I think we can all take from what we're saying, and it's it's interesting. It's interesting that the last, when you look at the last two presidents, when we include President-elect Trump, mm-hmm. the nation seems to be telling us in no uncertain terms. And Bernie is almost a fit, but he's not quite a fit because he's he's been a politician his entire, almost his entire adult life, the nation seems to be telling us we either want someone almost completely relatively new or someone that doesn't come from Washington at all. I mean, Barack Obama came from nowhere. I mean, I remember when he announced his initial run for president, people were saying, how dare he? Yeah. He doesn't have the resume. People in the mm-hmm. DNC Okay. Right. Basically, I'll saying, "How dare he? He Who doesn't have guy? the rest." Yeah. 
who is yeah. this guy? He who is this guy from Ray. rural Chicago, from Chicago, but, from South Side? But Bernie also has street cred. <laughs> he does. He's, he marched with Martin Luther King. That's yes. true. No, he's, not, he's, he's got, he's, he's he's got civil rights history. He's been in the fight since the beginning. Yeah. He's been on the street actually beating feet to, to get things done. Yes, and that but, was the same thing that we saw with Obama as well, as Obama has spent his entire life in public service. He started as a community organizer and went yeah. into politics from there. And, and I think people are making a distinction between politics and public service. Which there, they there shouldn't. Is a distinction. But no, but, but there really shouldn't be. But but there is. There is. Yeah, that's there, that was my point. Was when that it's I your think job versus doing. something that you go, you do, you leave. Um, Jason, you you were trying to you were trying to get a word in. Go ahead. Well, and it, it we it's a couple ideas back now. But when when Amber was talking about the voters that said oh, I would have voted for Bernie and switched to Trump, those people infuriate me more than the Republicans that voted for him because I'm gonna I was gonna vote for Bernie's ideals of free college and or affordable college and tuition raises to a businessman who only thinks about his income and and the people the rich people and that infuriates me more than than the republicans that turned around and held their nose and voted for him oh i totally agree jason there's a lot of motherfuckers that have infuriated me this election cycle can you tell well the that to to the twist that point around those are trump voters that would have gone for bernie well, so that's a whole different aspect that we haven't even dug into as to how yeah. many would have abandoned that whole it's, Trump deal. That's that's why we can't just look at the exit poll numbers and yeah. figure out where anybody would have gone in an alternate universe. Okay, which by the way, we're already living in an alternate universe. There's something wrong with the time stream that all of this has happened. David Bowie died. Uh, apparently, <laughs> he was the linchpin. Um, <laughs> yep. Now, now turning things Found around theory. towards towards Trump. Um, I, I read, uh, Washington Post had an excellent article from a, uh, female immigrant Muslim who voted for Trump. Yeah, I saw that article. Um, and that's something I think, uh, if you have time to read it in whole, listeners, go do it. it it's very educational, but to boil it down to a very quick, concise summation... It is she was a single issue voter and her single issue was um, Qatar and Saudi Arabia have repressive regimes and Mm -hmm. have been funneling money towards ISIL. Mm -hmm. And but they were also major contributors to the Clinton Foundation. And Mm -hmm. within the WikiLeaks emails, we saw on the subject of Qatar and Saudi Arabia that the Clinton camp was perfectly fine with using good old-fashioned diplomacy as opposed to any sort of economic pressure or anything else to solve the problem. And that is why she voted for Trump. So there's, there's a valid one issue. Of course, everybody's one issue is valid to that person. Um, I can't fathom the, the one issue thing. I'm, I'm more of a big picture person anyway. Mm-hmm. But uh, that was definitely her microcosm, and that was her big picture. So... Okay, uh, I think we've been uh, we've been dissecting the DNC's utter and complete failure for an hour now. So mm. I'm going to break mm. it here. So uh, if you if you need to, if you smoke them if you got them, we'll take a quick mm-hmm. break and then we'll come back and we'll actually go through what the Donald desires for the first hundred days of his oh. of his his reign. So we'll be right back. I'm out of fireball. Oh, no. (laughs) 